Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to another Top 10 Wednesday or Top 10's Day if you'd prefer. For today we are going to be looking at the Top 10 franchises killed off by one bad movie. So without further ado let's hop right into it. Coming in at number 10 is TMNT or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. So this was the sequel to the Michael Bay produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action reboot. Yes, that was as much to say as you thought it was. And to be honest, I actually enjoyed this second one marginally more than I did the first one. So that's why it's in the number 10 spot is because I actually have a soft spot for this movie. I actually enjoyed it. It felt more akin to the cartoons I grew up watching than the first one did. But I understand why it flopped. People still didn't like it. It wasn't the turtles they knew and loved. There were more movies planned, but that is now dead in the water, or I guess technically the sewer. Coming in at number 9 is the next Karate Kid. Yes, this is the one starring Hilary Swank, no, not one of the ones with Ralph Macchio, or even the Jaden Smith one. This was Pat Morita's last go around as Mr. Miyagi, and boy was it a sour one. After Ralph Macchio exited the series, Hilary Swank stepped in to try and fill the shoes, and it just didn't work. The movie was panned, hated by everyone and everything, and that was the last we saw of that original franchise. They should have just let it be, but no, they just had to try to karate chop every last little scent out of this franchise and by doing so drove it right into the ground. Coming in at number 8 is Halloween Resurrection, and as we all know, we went through a bit of a weird timeline when it comes to Halloween, but Resurrection, you know, it just, it, it frigged up, it was terrible, we had Busta Rhymes hosting a TV show, and Michael Myers was there, and Lori was killed like 10 seconds into the movie, it was horrible, and now we have Halloween 2018, which was finally a decent sequel, but it tracks back all the way to Halloween Resurrection, although the timelines didn't really make sense, they tried their best to work it out so I'm kind of counting that from the original to Resurrection for the most part as one semi sort of timeline and then Resurrection that was just the final line in the sand we got the Rob Zombie movies and now we have the good 2018 Reapers. Coming in at number seven is a two-parter and that is the amazing Spider-Man 2 and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. Why? The amazing Spider-Man 2 again was pretty much panned by everyone and for the same exact reasons that Spider-Man 3 were too much movie in too little time. They had two, three plus villains in each of these movies and they both killed off the respective wall crawling franchises. It sucks because everybody loves Spider-Man and now it feels like we're getting too much of him. I mean, we've had three actors within the last two decades. Sam Raimi was supposed to get a fourth one. That didn't work. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Well, there was supposed to be a three, a Sinister Six movie, this, that, a whole Spidey universe and those both just did not happen because of these movies. Coming in at 6 is hello, another two-parter, and that is Alien Covenant and Alien Resurrection. Resurrection ended the original timeline and that forced the reboot of Prometheus. Alien Resurrection went way too goofy, was completely ridiculous and utterly stupid, chopped, ended, Prometheus is ushered in, Prometheus I love the hell out of, and then Alien Covenant came in and it just kind of got lost in space. It wasn't the Prometheus sequel anyone wanted, and it wasn't the Alien prequel that anyone wanted. It looks like Ridley Scott's never going to get to finish his reboot trilogy, and I think we are much better off not getting another one after Resurrection. Coming in at number 5 is the Divergent series Allegiant. Well, this one was a bit of a shit show. I mean, this was supposed to be the next big young adult novel adaption franchise. It was supposed to be like the Hunger Games, or the Maze Runner, or Harry Potter. It was supposed to be the next big thing and then dud. No one got attached to the characters, a lot of the acting wasn't great, special effects were all over the place, the storylines all over the place. No one could really connect with these films unless they were true lovers of the book and even a lot of them couldn't defend these movies. Eventually it was supposed to go into like a two-parter final movie and then it was down to just one final movie and then it was down to being finished as a TV movie and then all the stars were like no I didn't sign up for this. So the project altogether was completely dropped and that series will now never be finished. Coming in at number 4 is Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales. My god, who thinks of these titles? Now although personally I did find Dead Men Tell No Tales better than On Stranger Tides, it still seems to be the final nail in the coffin for Jack Sparrow and his high sea adventures. For the last bit of news that we have gotten, they are now looking to completely reboot the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, even though a sixth one was in development, now it seems like they're going for the complete clean slate. I guess the whole 
Jack Sparrow shtick just got too old, Johnny Depp just doesn't really seem to have it anymore, and it shows through the audience and critics' reactions. So therefore, rather than the planned sixth film with Johnny Depp back in the driver's seat, we are getting a full-fledged reboot. Coming in at number three is A Good Day to Die Hard. Yes, the most recent Die Hard film starring Bruce Willis was terrible. It was nonsense. It was not a good day to die hard. It was a good day for that franchise to die for good, if that makes sense. For the most part, the Die Hard franchise was solid enough. There, the first one, obviously the best. Second one, more the same thing. It was okay. Third one's actually pretty enjoyable. Fourth one, although it went for the PG-13 angle, was still a lot of fun. And then you got this movie, <sighs> typical Russian baddies, Jai Courtney not being able to act unless he's playing Captain Boomerang, and Bruce Willis being able to swear again since he wasn't able to in the last one. It was just completely awful. That original franchise is now dead. Coming in at number two is Transformers The Last Night because that was the last straw for audiences and myself alike. So bad that even I could not stand it. I left the movie with a headache. Trying to figure out what was going on gave me a headache. This movie was so bad and it shows that audiences were finally sick and tired of Michael Bay and all of his Bayformer nonsense. Bumblebee did great. Luckily Hasbro has now officially acknowledged that Bumblebee is a full reboot so the Bayformers movies are now done. And coming in at numero uno is Batman and Robin. Yes, the Joel Schumacher directed shit fest starring George Clooney and whoever else was unfortunate enough to be in this movie. It was so bad from the Batman credit card to the terrible take on iconic villains to George Clooney's bat nipples. Nobody seemed to care while making this movie. It is so horrendous and it ended the Burton Schumacher Batman franchise. It completely killed Batman. He was dead for a good long time until Christopher Nolan came in with Batman Begins to save the day. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. So guys, that was my list. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what are your favorite, or in this case, least favorite movies that killed off a franchise. Be sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Links will be in the description and at the end of the video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and that's a wrap. We will be counting down the top 10 WTF moments in Oscar history.